Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord today, this morning. Praise the Lord. We welcome you to the Temple Church of Christ today. On behalf of Suffragan Bishop Ron E. Stevens, Lady Doretta Stevens, and the Temple Church of Christ family, we welcome you to worship with us today. In church and our online people, we worship you. We, we, we praise the Lord and we welcome you to worship with us today. We bring the sacrifices of praise into the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. So we again welcome everyone to the house of the Lord today. I am Sister Valerie Colvin, and I will be doing the announcements. And after I finish the announcements, Evangelist Michelle Bailey will come and do the prayer. Amen. Thank you. For the, the announcements for this week are as follows. Join us Sunday mornings each week for Sunday morning services, in person and online only uh, at 9 o'clock, in person and online at 11 o'clock. All times are Central Standard Times, uh, so just keep that in mind as I go and call the times. Uh, Wednesday night Bible study is at 7 p.m. in person and online. On Monday nights, join Suffragan Bishop Ron Stevens and the TCOC a church for Monday night prayer at 7 p.m. each night. Dial 508-924-3730. This Wednesday, Evangelist Cynthia Matthew Snow and Sister Waikita Lee will be talking about evangelism. They will be also answering questions during that night, during that Bible study. So submit your questions through tomorrow to be answered on Wednesday, February 16th. Amen. Ages 12 and over, join the TCOC Cloven Club during the fireside chat every second and, third and fourth Wednesdays of the month at 7 p.m. The Game On event that they will be hosting will be on February 25th. At a glance, items and events for the Cloven Club are on the TCOC app as well as the Facebook and web, TCOC website. See Brother Mark Morgan for any questions that you may have on that. Join Evangelist Cheryl Oliver and Minister Angela Pearson for the Victorious Living Teleconference on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Dial 909-318-7708. The Golden Girls will gladly continue to accept your change for change throughout the year. They have raised over $240 in January and will continue to raise throughout the year. They need your help. If you have any questions, see Minister Tracy Savage or Mother Mildred Lee. Upcoming Sisterhood events. There's a Chat and Chew in, in February and a March Book Club reading for the month of March. Every sister is welcome to the Chat and Chew on Saturday, February 26th from 1 until 3 p.m. There you can meet the, the leaders and all the sisters will be fellowshipping together. You can register today on the TCOC page of the TCOC app indicating, yes, I will attend. You don't have to indicate no if you will not attend. The second event for the sisterhood is for the month March monthly book club reading. This year's theme is Taking Inventory of the Heart. For the month of March, the sisters will read The Heart Monitor. It's a 30-day spiritual evaluation of the heart by Kimberly Ray Gavin. You can purchase your online book at Amazon.com. You won't be disappointed once you start reading this book. Amen. Let's join and support the sisterhood. The Men's Ministry Cafe Series meetings are every third Saturday of the month. This month's meeting will be on February 19th in the lower level. Please make note of the time, 9.30 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. See Elder Larry Lindsay or Minister Ernest Davis if you have any questions. TCOC's Christian Education Board presents the God Squad. There are lessons every first and third Sunday at 11 a.m. in the lower level for ages 5 through 22. See Director Natasha Williams or Elder Andrew Williams if you have any questions. For the month of February, we are finishing up the book of Genesis, chapters 32 through 50. Amen. Amen for that. And we'll conclude with the first chapters 
first nine chapters of the book of Exodus as we conclude the month of February. Check the TCOC app under events for the corresponding dates and, ch and chapters. And once you have completed your reading, please check yes that you have completed the reading for that day. These announcements can be found, all of these announcements can be found on the TCOC app, website, and Facebook pages. Thank you and God bless you. Praise the Lord and good morning, Temple Church of Christ and our online viewing audience. May we stand in honor of Jesus this morning. Let's draw our minds in. Let's forget about that outfit, dinner that needs to be prepared. Let's take this time to forget about ourselves and concentrate on him. Amen. Amen. We'll bow down heads. Father, you are holy. There is none like you. You're clothed in majesty and splendor. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Lord, some of us have come here this morning because of the leading of your Holy Spirit. Others may have come by way of invitation or perhaps they stumble upon this website. But we have come this morning that we may hear the truth. And you are the truth, the way, and the life. Lord, teach us to discern good from evil, rightly dividing the word of truth. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Lord, let us speak your word in authority, speaking to those dry and barren places that we may bring forth fruit and it may be multiplied. For God, your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Lord God, we come today and we say, God, activate your faith down on the inside of your people. We call upon you, Lord God, for we know that your word says, dear Heavenly Father, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Your word says that the truth shall make us free. Make us free in the hearing of the preached word today, Lord God. Heal the wounds of the brokenhearted. Proclaim liberty to the captives. And tell the prisoners, be free from your darkness. Lord God, let this be a new season of grace. Let us proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of favor. Give your people a bouquet, a beautiful bouquet, oh Lord God. Beauty instead of ashes. The oil of joy instead of tears. The garment of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. May we be known as mighty oaks of righteousness, strong, Lord God, significant, oh Lord God, found in right standing with you. Lord God, may we run and not be weary. May we walk and not faint. May we soar, may we rise, may we fly like the eagles, oh Lord God, for your goodness is running after us. In Jesus' name, amen. the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof. Oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. Hallelujah. Oh come on and bless the Lord. Let me do that one more time. Oh bless the His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Come on and clap your hands along with me and the praise team.
sacrifice of praise into the house
Let's celebrate him. We come to celebrate him. We come to magnify him. We come to worship him. Oh, open up your mouth, Zion. Open up your hearts and let's give him the praise and glory. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah to the king. He's my, he's my savior. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. Oh. And, and then the song says, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, I'm going to tell you again. He's my savior. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. If you got it, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, every word. Every word, every God, my Savior, God, my healer. He's a healer. God, my yes, He is. Yes, yes, He is. Yes, He is. One more time. Every word, every word. Every word, every word worship, one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God. Amen. Let's give God a praise. Go celebrate Him. Amen. Celebrate Him. Every, every praise, every praise, every praise is to Him. He deserves to be praised. We came into this house today to give him the praise because all the praise and all of the glory belongs to him. All dominion, all power, all honor, it belongs. Oh, open up your mouths and give God praise one more time and clap your hands because he deserves the praise. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Praise team, thank you for doing a wonderful job. Thank you. And to our musicians, all of our musicians, thank you for coming to this house to worship him. I said we're coming to this house to worship him and to praise him. That's why I come. I come to praise him. Don't, don't, don't allow, don't, don't allow a, a gas bill, electric bill, car troubles, family troubles, p pandemic, opposition, enemies, mother-in-law, father-in-law, ex, ex-boyfriend, ex-husband, ex-wife. Don't, don't let anything stop you. I'm going to praise you. Ah! From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, it's not gonna stop me from giving 
you the praise. Woo. I praise you. I praise you. Thank you. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. You may be seated if you can. Thank you. Thank you. I could, I could, I could, I could, I could easily give you seven to ten reasons why we ought to praise it. I could easily do it. Easily. I, I could tell you that he's worthy to be praised. I could tell you that he's worthy to be praised. Oh, I could give, I give you seven reasons why we ought to praise him. He called you on to marvel his light that you may show forth his praise. I save you to praise me. Oh, I could, I could give you some reasons. It's my warfare. It's my warfare. Here's how I fight the devil. I open up my mouth and I give him the praise. Oh, I could give you some reasons. He deserves, he deserves the praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Thank you, Father. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What, what, what makes, what makes church so exciting is that you can't do this any other place. You can't go to the gallery, uh, you can't go to Jamestown, out of Jamestown or out to St. Clair County. But only in the church, you can come together collectively, corporately, with one singleness of mind and praise the same thing, and his name is Jesus. Give God a hand praise one more time for his goodness. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. 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 
I know that today, could you just hold it for one second? I know today is Super Bowl Sunday. A lot of folk gonna be screaming and yelling at the stadium. But no one gonna outpraise me. They gonna, they gonna praise the Rams. They gonna praise Cincinnati. But nobody gonna outpraise me. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he's done for me, it's a touchdown, it's a Super Bowl that does not have to be replayed. He tackled the devil, he tackled sin and blocked iniquity from taking me down. This is the Super Bowl. It's at the cross. Nobody, you're not going to outpraise me. Because Super Bowl can't do nothing for me but what Christ has done. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We welcome to Temple Church of Christ. And those of you on social media, far and near, we say praise the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is here in the sanctuary today. And, and let me say that in this kind of atmosphere, anything can happen I said this kind of atmosphere anything can happen people can get healed people can get new ideas new strategies new insight people can be set free in this atmosphere expect God to do something for you expect to leave out differently than how you came in the Bible says it's according to your faith. Believe that God can solve any problem you face it. I don't care how insurmountable it may appear to be. I want you to thank God in advance of what he's going to do. Clap your hands and give God the glory and praise for what he has done. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Welcome to the house of the Lord and all of our guests and friends from far and near. We say welcome to the Temple Church of Christ. We're absolutely honored and delighted that you have taken this time to come to the house of the Lord. And those on social media, we are absolutely honored and delighted that you have stopped and paused to come into our services as well. You are welcome and you are absolutely invited. I do want to take this opportunity also to, again, to remind everybody to continue to uh, wear your mask. We want our sanctuary to be safe. Uh, we're still practicing sitting at least six feet apart from each other if they're not in our family, and we're asking you all call to continue to wear your mask, and we have had absolutely wonderful compliance, and I want to say thank you, because we want our sanctuary to be a, a safe place as much as possible. I know people are saying a lot of different things and doing different things, but we want to make sure that the sanctuary is safe. So thank you, safe. So thank you for your compliance with our social distancing and CDC policies. Thank you so much. I'm also saddened to announce that uh, the former pastor, Pastor Clifford Matthew passed away this week. He was the third pastor of this church, and he was my friend, and he was a friend to the Temple Church of Christ. And this week he passed away. He is the, um, he's the brother of Evangelist Cynthia Matthew Snow and also the brother of Jackie uh, Snow and the uh, uncle of Sister uh, uh, Kathy Davis. I ask you to keep... Uh, that family in your prayer that God will give them strength and peace uh, in the loss of their, their brother, their uncle, uh, their father. So please keep the family in your prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready for the word this morning? Yeah. This morning I call your attention to the book of Mark as it is found in chapter number 5. The book of Mark chapter number 5. I will be reading the first five verses. Uh, this story is actually consists of 20 verses. And I will summarize many of those verses. The book of Mark, chapter number 5, verse number 1. Hear the word of the Lord. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him no not with change 
because that he had done, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broke in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for your goodness and your mercy. This is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Now, I pray, God, that you take these clay lips and use them, Lord God, to build our faith. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Speak to us. Talk to us. Encourage us. Allow us to leave today with an aha moment. Allow this hour to be a great investment of our time that we have heard the word that has changed our lives. Speak your word, God. I pray that we will leave differently than when how we came in because we have received the word. Speak to us. And not only that, I pray, God, you touch someone's heart to the extent that they will say, I want to be saved. Now, God, let your word have full course. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I would like to remind everyone that I think in 2022 is winning souls for Jesus. It is not just our mission for 2022. It is the mission of the church to make disciples. But we've accentuated this thing this year, encouraging everybody to tell somebody about Jesus. It's no question about it. We are living in the last days. If there was ever a time for men and women to come to Christ, boys and girls, this is the time. So let's tell someone about Jesus, about what he has done and who he is, because we want to see souls won as never before in 2022. A subject matter today, my assignment is titled, The Testimony of a Lunatic. The Testimony of a Lunatic. Will you help me preach this? Somebody say, The Testimony of a Lunatic. I want to talk about the testimony of a lunatic. And on the screen, you see a, a lunatic who symbolizes this, this man in the book of Mark, chapter number five. We don't know his age. He doesn't have a name in the text. We simply don't know. We don't know how long he's been a, a lunatic. A maniac. We, we don't know the time. We don't know. No, neither do we know the cause. Well, why did he become a lunatic? We, we don't know. We don't know who he's connected with. We're uncertain. The text is quiet on his name, on his age, how he came to become a lunatic. We're absolutely in the dark. On the screen, you will see he is one who is Harry. He doesn't have a comb. He, he, he lives in tombs. He, he is dirty. He's smelly. He's stinking. His teeth are brown and black and missing. His fingernails are full of dirt and grime. His toes are dirty. He looks like a wild animal because he is he's a lunatic. It is Jesus who is in chapter number four who speaks to us of the sower and the seed. And the crowds were so big that he would have to put a, a ship at the bay to preach. In chapter four, he's taught, telling us and teaching us about the sower and the seed. And then he said, now let's go to the other side. And his mission is that in his mind, he knows there's a lunatic that needs to meet Jesus. God doesn't discriminate. He doesn't care about your background or your issues. He's not just looking for theologians and people who are goody two shoes. That's who Jesus is looking for. He is a soul who desires to see Jesus. He is messed up. He's messed up. 
And, and, and the text today is a testimony of a lunatic. This, this subject matter, testimony of a lunatic, carries my message. So I think that it's important that you understand these terms that I'm going to share with you. The first term I want you to understand is testimony. The message is a testimony of a lunatic. T testimony defined is a declaration of truth or fact. And there you see on the screen a, a young man who is in court and he gives a testimony. Testimony defined is a law evidence given by a witness, especially orally in court under oath or affirmation, you have, to, you have to be a witness. One has to affirm affirmation. You have to be able to be a witness to give a testimony. Three, we note that a testimony is evidence testifying to something. This message is a testimony of a lunatic. What is a lunatic? A lunatic defined is affected with severely disordered state of mind. Something's wrong with your mind. Insane. Someone who behaves in a silly or dangerous way. Oh, by the way, St. Louis is full of lunatics. Lunatics everywhere. Some of these lunatics are carrying guns. And they behave in a silly way. And they'll shoot you. They're not even upset with you. They'll shoot you. They're not even mad. They've got a spirit that's a lunatic spirit. And not only is it in St. Louis, it's in our politics, in our school systems, it's in our churches. Lunatics. Insane. And the media loves it. That's how they sell news. They tell us about the lunatics in our society. And we say, oh, no, but we want to read more about lunatics. It captivates our attention to see lunatics. How could he do that? How could he say that? Why would she go there? Lunatics. They tend to draw our attention. It is Jesus who was drawn to a lunatic. On the Sea of Galilee, he goes to meet this man. But while on the sea, there's a storm, something in the atmosphere that hinders him from going to this place. The Gadarenes is where he needs to go to meet this man. But there's a storm. Jesus falls asleep on the ship. The disciples wake him up and says, care if not that we perish. Jesus stands up and he speaks to the atmosphere, speaks to the storm, and the storm ceases. Jesus has a mission. I've got to get to the Gadarenes. There's a man there who needs to see me. Jesus will make his way to you. You just got to trust him. There to, at the gatherings, we find that Jesus meets this man. And immediately when this man sees him, he falls to his knees and begins to worship Jesus. I want to talk about this lunatic for a second. I want to tell you 10 things about this man in the text that tells us who he is. Two things about him. Number one, we notice in the text. Number one, he lives in tombs. He resides in tombs. That's where his home is, in a tomb. There's no restroom. There's no running water. It's brick and it's rock. He lives in a tomb, in the graveyard, in the cemetery. The brother's home is in a tomb. Not on the tomb, but the text tells us, the scripture tells us that his home is also in the mountains. He travels from the tomb up to the mountains. In fact, the book of Luke tells us that he goes and spends time in the wilderness. This is what we call one of the synoptic gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke are what we call synoptic gospels. The three gospels tells us similar stories in different kinds of ways. And this is a synoptic, a synoptic gospel that tells us of this maniac, this lunatic. So he travels from a tomb, a cold tomb, which is his home, up into the mountains. Number three we notice about this man is that he has an unclean spirit. Ceremonially, he is unclean because he's touching dead things in the cemetery. And anything that you touch that's dead makes you unclean. 
But he's not only just clean because he touches, but he is unclean physically, he is unclean emotionally, he is unclean mentally, he is unclean spiritually, he's got a perverted spirit. There's something about him. He's an unclean man and he has an unclean spirit. Woo! The text makes it plain, plain who this man is. He's untamable. He has an untamable personality. He cannot be controlled. The text tells us the verse number three. It says, who dwelt among the tombs and no man could bind him. No, not with chain. He was stronger than Samson. Samson, they would tie him with ropes and Samson would break the ropes. But this man, they chained him with... They chain him, they chain him with iron chains, and he popped the chains. He had this supernatural strength of breaking chains. God. So we find that for point five about this man, he could not be chained according to the scriptures. We couldn't chain him. We know number, five, number six, he was also, according to the text, the Bible tells us he was a man who cried day and night. In the tombs, you can hear him cry. Ah! On the mountain, late at night, 2 o'clock in the morning. Ah! You hear this lunatic crying through the night. In torment. Weeping through the night. He's in torment. According to the text. The scripture tells us a seven thing about him. He's cutting himself. He takes short, sharp rocks and cut himself. On the screen, you'll see the man, you'll see cuts in his chest and cuts on his body, cuts on his ears, cuts on his neck. Even today, we have people who are cutters. They take razor blades and they cut themselves. This self-hate, this torment, this sadness. And this man is cutting himself with sharp rocks. Hey, you notice another thing about this lunatic. He is possessed with the devil. And not just a devil, there are demons that possess him. And I am convinced that demons still live today. That demons have not gone away. That devils are alive and real. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. The devil is alive and well. Even 2,000 years ago, the devil is still here. Don't get it twisted. He's alive and he's well. And this demon possessed this boy or this man, whatever his age was. And he wasn't just a demon. It was demons. And Jesus walked upon the shore and saw this, this man. The man came running towards him. And when he saw Jesus fall off, this man, this, this lunatic, ran and bowed down and worshipped him. And this lunatic cried out and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus? This, this devil knew his name. Don't you know the devil knows Jesus' name? Before Jesus could even introduce himself, this demon runs and falls at Jesus' feet and says, Jesus, the son of the most High God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. The devil knows that his time is running out. The demon says, are you come to torment us now? Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. For he said unto him, come out of the man, thy unclean spirit. That's why the, the devil responded, because Jesus says, come out. And the devil began to speak back. And Jesus asked this, and asked this man, what is thy name? He said, my name is Legion, for we are many. This, the, Legion is a, a military term in Rome. It has to deal with, with soldiers, either 6,000, 3,000 to 6,000 soldiers is considered to be a legion. The exact number of demons in this man, we, did not, we do not know, but we think there were thousands of demons that have possessed this man's body. And this devil began to respond to Jesus and says, my name is Legion. And, and they understood that it was time for them to go. And here's what the devil said. And he besought, that is, this, the demons besought that he would not send them away out of the country. The demons said, please don't send us away out of this country. I believe demons have strongholds. Demons, they govern dominions and territories. And these demons said, this is our territory. Don't, don't take us out of the country because this is our area. In St. Louis, we have demons in St. Louis. 
demons of polarization and segregation. There are demons here. You go to Las Vegas, demons of gambling and prostitution. You go down in Atlanta, Georgia, demons of perversion. It, it all depends on where you go. Different areas have different demons that, reign, that rule and reign territorial areas. Don't get it twisted. There are demons and they govern the areas. Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. And the demon said, this is our territory. And we want to stay here. Here's how Jesus responded to them. Because they asked Jesus, please. They said to him, they said unto Jesus. And they besought him that he would send them not out of the country. Now they were nigh unto them uh, on the mountains, a great herd of swine feeding. And the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And on the screen there, you'll see swines. And these demons are saying, put us into the swine. Don't just cast us out of this area. Put us into the swines. And there you see the swines, the pigs. And Jesus responded to their requests. And the demons came out of the man. Oh, I got so excited when I was read this. I don't know how long this brother had been in, the, in tombs. I don't know how long he'd been going up in the mountains. I don't know, but one day, just one day, God gave him deliverance. Just, just one day, one day, God turned things around. I believe that just one day, just one day, God can change things. I don't care how long you've been going through a test or a trial or tribulation. I know just one day with Jesus that he can turn everything around. I don't care how long you've been in your tomb. I don't care how long you've been in the wilderness. Just one day, God can do it. Suddenly, he can turn things around. Don't you dare give up because God can turn things around in just an hour. Woo, God. No matter how long you've been in captivity, you meet Jesus on just one day. He can break some habits. He can turn some things around. He can cause that depression to turn into joy. He can give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Just one day, he can change it. He can heal your marriage in one day. Woo. Just one day. Just one day. Woo. Just one day. I've been living this tomb for a long time. I've been cutting myself for a long time. I've been crying all night and all day for a long, long time. But just one day, Jesus turned my whole world around. It just happened. It didn't take three weeks. It didn't take four weeks. It didn't take four months. But just one day. And this Jesus who did this 2,000 years ago, he's here today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's still delivering. He's still opening up doors. He's still breaking chains. Break every change. Ooh. The devil is powerful, but Jesus is more powerful. The text tells us he changed things. Mark 5 and 12, you know, and all the devils besought him. Saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. The estimated value of these 2,000 swines is stated to be a million dollars. A million dollars of product that goes into the sea. Oh, hallelujah. And the people were bothered by that. They were, they were, they were upset by the fact that they had lost product. And the people in the town wanted Jesus to leave. We want you to go. We, we don't want you to be around here anymore because we are concerned about how you are affecting our, our economy and our world. Oh, but I thank God for Jesus. He knows how to change things. He knows how, he knows how to give us a new beginning. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. That the old things have passed away and behold, all things are new. Don't you give up on Jesus. He's a mind regulator. He's a heart fixer. That's nothing too hard for him to do he specializes in things that are impossible and the bible says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think according to the power that worketh in us he's the same god oh god oh what is man that he's mindful of us he loves us so much this man had been delivered from demons Ooh. 
over maybe over 2,000, 3,000 demons. He had been released from the demons. Why do people act the way they were? Their powers, their demons that are at work. That's why Jesus says, when you pray, pray, deliver, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil because evil is very real. It's present. And Jesus says, when you pray, don't forget to say, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil because evil is here and the devil has come to steal and to kill and to destroy. He's the father of lies. He's the author of confusion. But Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it more. Abundantly. Woo, he was a brother. I've been set free. I used to cut myself. I used to, and notice the pigs go down to the sea. You know why? They, they had a suicidal spirit. It was a suicidal spirit that was in that man, and he was wrestling with himself. And Jesus took that suicidal spirit and, and transferred it into the swines. And the reason those swines went so violently into the sea is because of that spirit of suicide that was upon that boy. I believe that Jesus is the answer to suicidal issues. I believe he's a chain game changer. I believe he's a thought regulator i believe he gives you a whole new life and you don't have to commit suicide oh god there's a man named a man named jesus notice in the text chapter 5 verse 15 they all heard about the swines but they heard about the man who had been delivered they came to this location where jesus was and note they and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had a legion they saw him now differently he was sitting he was clothed and he was in his right mind this man has he was sitting the the brother couldn't sit still. The, the brother could not sit still. He's all over the But when he met Jesus, you said he had attention, dis, attention deficit disorder. But when he met Jesus, I'm going to handle your attention deficit disorder. I'm going to help you to sit still. Oh, God. They came and they saw this man who was a lunatic who couldn't be still all over the place he was sitting Luke tells us he was sitting at the feet of Jesus which, which denotes his discipleship I'm a follower of Jesus they saw him sitting this man who was butt naked is now clothed I asked myself where the clothes came come from. They just came off the ship out of a storm. The ship was full of water. But somehow God says, I'm going to put some clothes. We're going to find some clothes for you. And now the brother, rather than naked, I got my clothes on. I believe that when you put Christ in your life, I will clothe you. I will cover you. I will meet your needs according to my riches and glory. I don't know where the clothes are, but you put Christ first. He will meet your needs uh, oh God seek ye first uh, the kingdom of God uh, and his righteousness uh, and all things will be added unto you uh, he'll give you clothes he'll give you shoes he'll, he'll give you a job he'll open up doors he'll give you a car he'll give you a house oh uh, yes he will uh, he will give you what you need for he's your shepherd and you shall not want Woo! the brother sitting still Clove and in his right mind, oh, he got some new thoughts. I'm not going back to the tomb, I'm not going back to the mountain. Mm -mm -mm -mm. My spirit now is teachable. Ooh, yes. I don't have unclean spirits no more. I believe that some folk ain't really met Jesus because when you really meet Jesus, there's going to be a sign. There's going to be a sign and things you used to do, I don't want to do no more. I don't hang out at the, tub, the club no more. I've been with Jesus. I don't run with y'all no more. I'm not coming to the mountain because I really met Jesus. 
Some of y'all met church. You met religion. You met denomination. You met organization. You met Pastor Stevens. You met First Lady Stevens. You met Dr. Wilford McMullen. But there's somebody you miss. Haven't met Jesus. He's a game player. He's a game player. He's a game changer. He's a mind regulator. And there's nobody like him. Oh God. I got excited reading this. I've read it many times, but the word of God is alive. It's refreshing. Oh, this is so good. You sitting still. Got some new clothes on, and you're on your right mind. Watch, watch this, watch this, watch this. And the people were afraid. Do you see the text? He was clothed in his right mind, and the people were afraid. When you were acting all crazy and a lunatic and a maniac, we weren't afraid of you. When you all in the cry, in those caves, crying all night and screaming at night, we weren't afraid of you. But the moment you get connected with Jesus and your life has changed, now we scared of you. We had you figured out. We knew you were alcoholic because your daddy was alcoholic. We knew you were on drugs because your brother was on drugs. We knew you carry concealed weapons and go out shooting for God. That's what your nephew did. We had you pegged out, brother. But now now that you met Jesus, we can't figure you out. There's something different about you. You're a royal priesthood. You're a chosen generation. You're the light of the world, the sun of the earth, and we're scared of you. People get scared of you when you accept Christ. But some people don't want you to accept Christ because we, we scared. We scared of what's going to happen to you. You're not going to fit in with us. God, don't let anybody hold you back from pursuing Christ. I want you to be so hungry for him. The Bible says that the heart uh, panteth after the water brooks, uh, so panteth my soul after thee. Uh, I want you so hungry and so thirsty for God. Uh, I don't care what you say. I'm just, I'm just thirsty for the Lord. Uh, he that thirsts uh, shall be satisfied and feel. This man now has been set free. From what pastor? From the tombs, the mountains, unclean spirit, untamable behavior. I don't do chains anymore. Chains have been broken. On the inside, uh, there's no, there's no, there's no cutting of my body anymore. There's not, I don't cut myself anymore. Them demons that had control of me, they have no control. I have been set free. So, so, so. Here's what he says. I want to follow you, Jesus. <laughs> You've been so good to me. I've been in, I've been in the graveyard for so long, and I just wanna, I wanna follow you. Can I, can I get? What happened? The people put Jesus out of town when they recognized that those swines had been killed and that boy, that man had been delivered. They said, you got to go. Get out. We don't want you around here. And so Jesus steps back into the ship. And when he steps back into the ship, the man, this lunatic, who was a lunatic, he comes to the boat to talk to Jesus. Look what he says in verse number 18. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil, he prayed that he might be with him. Uh, I want to. I want to go with you, Jesus. I want to take up. My, I want to take up the cross and follow you. I want to be with you. Look at Jesus. How he responded. Jesus. How be it. Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis, Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all the men did marvel. Jesus said, no. Can I come with you, Lord? No. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, when the demons made a request, take us out of us and put us into those swine, Jesus says, yes. To the demons, he answered a demonic prayer, yes. I'll put you into the swines. He answered their requests. But this lunatic who had been delivered and set free, Jesus says no to the prayer request. What do you do when Jesus says no? 
You brought me out. But he's saying no. He set you free. He said, but Jesus says no. God, why would you say no? I've been through more than what your disciples have gone through. I could be a real good team member on your team. I could tell folk what they've done. I know they might get jealous, but I want to be a part of your team. And Jesus says, here's my hand. I don't understand what you're saying. I said, no. Jesus says, I don't understand what you're saying, boo. See, our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways. Uh, his thoughts are way above our thoughts. He's on a whole different level. So Jesus says, you go back, you go back home. And Jesus says, no. He says, no, for because I'll get more glory if you go back to the capitalists. I'll get more praise. Uh, I'll get more recognition. There's more glory. There's more glory. There's more excellence and exaltation. If you go back home to get on this shit with me, go back. Look, God knows how to direct you. You've got to let God have his way. Not your way, but God, you lead me. You direct me, Lord. You tell me where you want to go. And if God says no, say, Lord, I thank you for the no. Because I know you're in control. Like we got to go deeper on that. Here four ways. Here four ways. I had to stop and do a commercial. Here four ways. God answers prayers. When number one, when the request is not right, God says no. When the timing is not right, God says slow. Just slow up. When the request and timing are right. But you're not right. God says, grow. When the request is right, the timing is right, and you're right, God says, go. Yeah. Woo, God. God answers prayer. He will say no. He will say slow. He will say grow. Or he will say go. Oh, God. He answers prayer. Well, God just telling me, he tell me no. No, he's telling you slow. You're going too fast. You're not in the right timing with God. It's the wrong timing. Well, I, I don't know. He ain't answering my prayer. It ain't the time. Or you're not in the right place of mind to go. But this man, he says, no. You can't join me. You go back and you go and tell. You go and you tell what the Lord has done. Look what he says. How be it Jesus suffered him not. That means Jesus allowed him not to join him. But said unto him, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on you. You go back and tell them. They already know your story, but you go back and tell them, I was in, I was in the tomb, man. That was my house. Yeah, man, I was, I was in the mountain. That was my house. I cried all night. I cut myself. My mind was all jacked up, but now I've been delivered. He says, you go back and you tell them. You see the title says, go and tell. Go and tell. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, this is a man with 10 testimonies. You go back and you tell them your 10 testimonies. Show my 10 testimonies. You tell them, next slide. You tell them, I was in a tomb. I was in a mountain. I had a perverted, unclean spirit. I was nasty. I was dirty. I was untamable. I was in chain. My mind was in chain. I cried all night. I was so depressed. I kept cutting myself. I, I was delivered from demons and devils. I was delivered from mental illness. He helped my mind. And I was delivered by Jesus. He said, you go back and you tell him your testimony. Woo! A man with ten testimonies. As I, as I conclude today, I close with three questions. I got three questions I want to ask you. My first question is, what has the Lord done for you? Where's your tomb? Tell me about your mountain. Cutting yourself. Your overdose. Your backsliding, God brought you back. What has God done for you? Well, 
I don't know. I don't know. He's done great things for you. Sometimes we can't get excited about Jesus because you don't know what he's done for you. What has he done for you? Second question I have for you. Who have you told? Who have you told what the Lord has done for you? Well, I don't want people to get the wrong impression of me. You know, Pastor, I got a, I got, you know, I, I got a person, I got a, I got a reputation. Who have you told? What Christ has done for you? You just come to church. You just worship God and pray. No, no, no. God called you to be a light, brother. He called you to share your story. And all that mess in your past, he was setting you up. Oh, God. He was setting you up. The setback was a setup for a comeback. He was setting you up. All the mess, all the corruption, all the things you went through should have lost your mind, should have committed suicide, you should have given up on life, but you still here. Had it not been for the Lord on your side. Woo. I don't know why I went off with all of that because God was setting you up to tell your story. You've been shot four times. You've been cut. You've been out of four divorces and you still got your mind. You've been hurt. You've been disappointed. And God is still saying, I'm with you. Who have you told? Third question. And why haven't you shared your testimony? Why haven't you opened up? Why well, haven't you told somebody how good God has been to you? You got a brother, you got a cousin, you got an uncle, you got a mother-in-law, you got a father-in-law, you got a friend, and you haven't told them your story. Why have you not shared your testimony? He said, you go back to the capitalist, the capitalist, and you tell them what things I've done for you. Woo. And that brother went back to tell folk his story. I want to tell you what the Lord has done for me. That's why you're not excited because you really can't figure out what the Lord has done for you. You just churchy and religious and just go in and out, but you have forgotten that it's God who brought you out of darkness into this marvelous light. You think you're so clean and so and so righteous, but had it not been for God on your side. Here's why people don't share their testimony. Dr. Terry Goodwin helped us with this on last week. Two reasons we don't share our testimony. We are, we are fearful. We are with a fear of public speaking. We don't want to stand up before folk and say, God brought me out. I was jacked up. I was messed up. My mind was messed up. But God brought me out. We look people in the face and say, but God brought me. Whether it be 10 or 100 people, let me tell my story. That God has brought me out. Your story must be greater than the opposition and the people who are around you. Just when Ezekiel was called into ministry, God tells Ezekiel in chapter number 3, don't look at their faces. When you go out and preach, you tell them your story. He tells Jeremiah the same thing. When you go to minister Jeremiah, don't be afraid of the public opinions. Open up your mouth and speak two reasons we don't testify I'm afraid of public speaking I, I don't know what to say you got to package your testimony you've got to be prepared to tell your story before the time so you know what you're going to say my daddy was alcoholic, but God bless me. I'm not alcoholic. My, my mother committed suicide, but God helped my mind. I'm still here today. And I, had it not been for the, you always tell me, had it not been for the Lord on my side, I've been just as messed up as well. I used to smoke. I used to shoot needles in my arms. See this mark? That's a mirror. I used to stick needles here. But had it not been for God, prepare, package your testimony. Let me tell you, it's the anointing that follows preparation the more prepared you are the more anointed you can be the praise team prepares to give us an anointed presentation on Sunday but we say hey but they rehearse they, 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 that's a part of the anointing it is Jesus who lets us know that he prepares us prior to the anointing flowing. That burden removing, yoke destroying power of God is connected to preparation.
And that's why when a person gets up and preach, you can't preach. You haven't read the Bible. You have been no training. You have no study. You'll get up and try to preach. And you can't tell Jeremiah from Isaiah uh, to, uh, to, uh, to Peter. There has to be some level of preparation because the anointing steps into your preparation. That's why you got to dwell in the secret place. But he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high, the place of preparation. Oh, God, don't let me get off track here. We got people who are unanointed in their witnessing because you're unprepared to tell your story. Package it, baby girl. Brother, brother, baby brother, package it. Get ready to tell your story. What God has done for you. The second reason we don't testify is fear of rejection. No one likes to be rejected. Even people you don't like, you don't want them to reject you. Something about the spirit of rejection. If I tell my story, they're going to they're gonna laugh at me. If I tell my story, they're going to they're gonna call me a liar. We are so fearful of rejection. But the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Acts 1 8, I'm going to make you witnesses. I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost to deal with your fear. Oh, God. And you're going to be a witness unto the utmost ends of the world. world. You're going to be a witness wherever you go. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm asking you. We know the lunatic's testimony. What is your testimony? What is your story you're going to share? To your children, your grandchildren. They don't even know you safe. They don't even know you safe because you just go to church. But you never tell them what Christ has done for you. You got in law. They don't know. Well, I just want them to find out. I don't want to put them under no pressure. If you don't put them under pressure, the world will pressurize them to turn their lives to the devil and demons. You got to open up your mouth and say, Grandbaby, Jesus, save me. I don't want to put no pressure on them. You dating that, you dating that brother? Yeah, but I don't want to pressure you. You better tell them what you believe in. You better tell them you're born again. Oh, no. Pastor, I don't want to. I don't want to press that brother. You know, I want him to make his own decision. Oh, God. Are you kidding me? You better open up your mouth and tell him what he's done for you. Huh, Junior, baby, I know we dating, but let me tell you who I am. I'm saved and I'm sanctified and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And I don't play church. I believe in the power of God. I'm almost done. So if you get your little boyfriend and your little girlfriend, don't you let them get by without letting them know who you are. I go to church, you better show up. You better love the things I love. You better show up because I show love me some Jesus and you better show up. So I conclude, what is your testimony? Let me give you some help on this. Maybe you say, I don't know what to say, Pastor. Let me give you. He delivered you from sin. He delivered you from the power of sin, the penalty of sin, and the presence of sin. Most sinners don't understand what sin is, but you got to tell them I was under bondage, but God set me free. He delivered me from hell. That separation from God, he, he delivered me. That's your, everybody, we got all that testimony. He delivered me from hell. He delivered me from the power of the devil. Three. He delivered me from the spirit of fear. I walked in fear. Four. He delivered me from death. I'm now, I have eternal life. And if I die, I'm going to live again. That's your testimony. Uh, uh, if you come to my funeral, you may see my body. But to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. I'm getting up for although I be dead, yet shall I live. He delivered me from deception. I lied. I cheated. I was dishonest. I, 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 but he delivered me. That's a testimony that you may have. He delivered me from fornication. Uh, yeah, every time I had a chance to get some, I got some. But he did something for me. He delivered me. He, had, he gave me the power to say, no. <laughs> no, you're not. Your body is the temple of the living God. He delivered me. Somebody ought to shout on that one. He delivered me from an unforgiving. I was so unforgiving. That's a testimony. I was bitter. I was angry. I had a chip on my shoulder. A folk had stabbed me in my back. I ain't forgiving nobody. I ain't going to forgive nobody. I, that ain't in my spirit. God's going to have to give me a word. I'm still angry for what he's done. But when you can say God has forgiven me. My daddy messed up. My mama messed up. My cousin cut me. I've been cheated on every side. But I forgive them all because God. That's a testimony. But I'm not walking in anger and bitterness. God, you got to tell somebody.
somebody. I ain't angry no more. I don't curse folk out no more. God has changed me. He delivered you from not trusting God. That's a deliverance. And this is one Bishop Johnson, Johnson used to always say, my pastor, my former pastor, Bishop James A. Johnson, he said, he's always paid God deliver me from myself. One of your greatest testimonies, he delivered you from you. You know your stuff. He delivered me from, he delivered me. I don't know what I got going on the inside, but he took that stuff out of me. He delivered me from myself. I was jacked up. I looked saved on the outside, but on the inside I was a hot mess. But he, he delivered me. And don't you dare be ashamed to tell your story. It may not be a thousand people you tell it to. It may just be one or two people. But the Lord delivered you. Your sons and daughters should know the Lord delivered me. And let me say, don't nullify your testimony. Because you can have a great testimony, but you got a bad attitude. And the way you act, I can't hear what you're saying. Because you act so funny. You act so, so weird. On your job, you ought to be the sweetest person on your job. You should be so customer, customer service. Oh, yes, sir. May I help you, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When a customer called me and they start getting upset and start cursing, I said, look, hold, hold it, sir. I, I, you call me because you want me to help you. But if you keep cursing, I'm going to have to discontinue this conversation. I'm going to say professional 100% of the time, sir. Now, if you have, I know you're upset. I hear what you're saying. I'm sorry this happened to you. But, sir, if you keep cursing like you're cursing, I will discontinue this conversation. That's a way to talk to people. And if you're going to be a light, you got to have a personality so you can tell your story. And sometimes your attitude can hinder and terminate your testimony. Yeah, I've been in tune, but yeah, you've got a bad attitude. Yeah, I was on the mountain. Yeah, but you snappy, you mean, and you're stingy, and you're unforgiving, and you're still using curse words. That, 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 there's something people ought to see in you that say, I want to know your story. I, I appreciate a minister... Uh, Joe Lewis, who was one of our speakers, a, minister, a member here, a minister, who said, if you're going to win somebody, people must like you. You got to be likable. Before I can listen to you, I got to like you. Because if I don't like you, I don't, wanna, I don't care what you say. People say people will care about people. If people who care about, they don't care about what you know until they know that you care. People want to know, do you care about me? If I know that you care about me, then I, I care to know what you know. People don't care about what you know until they know that you care. So I, I want to say that first, you, you must be likable. And when people are likable, they will listen. I, I'm listening because I like you. And we can't have people in the church who the world don't like because you got an attitude, because you snappy. Because you mean, because you wishy-washy. you nice on Tuesday, but you mean on Wednesday. Thursday, you're sweet, but Friday, you got issues. Don't tell me about Jesus. I don't want to be a part of you. Seek to be like Christ. So people like you. And when they like you, but the Joe, uh, uh, Minister Joe Rice made the plan, when they like you, they'll listen. And when they listen, they will believe you. And when they believe you, they will buy from you. This brother went back to the city, and he was so likable that they listened, and they believed, and they bought into what he said. Why do you know that, Pastor? I'm glad you asked as I conclude. The book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 40. Jesus goes back to the same town. I want to share with you the impact of the lunatic's testimony. Check this out. And it came to pass that... When Jesus was returned, return word to gathering, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. This man left a testimony. He left a story that impacted the people's lives in gathering, and they couldn't wait to see Jesus because of the story of the lunatic. He influenced other people. What's your story? It's the Val. What's your story? Come on up, Val. What's your story? Val, I want you to give me your, your story. What, your story that's going to draw somebody to Christ. This is my last point. 
I call a witness to the stand. You are the jury. I'm the attorney. And this is my witness. And tell me your testimony for winning people to the Lord. Come and talk to, come to the stand, my friend. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. What a message. Uh, I'm not going to be before you long. I probably got about five minutes at the most. But my testimony is God has given me some shut up grace. How many know that? How many of you know that dying uh, to yourself, to self, is a process? It is a process. So God has given me some shut up grace. How, let's say shut up grace because I know we all need some shut up grace. We all say things that we don't need to say. You don't need to say everything. Think about what God has done for you. Instead of confronting somebody, go in front of the Lord and talk to him about what's on your mind. Now, don't miss it. This is a testimony. You can share with somebody, God gave me shut up grace. I used to curse the folk out like, I curse, curse folk out like you, but God gave me shut up grace. Go on, Sister Val. Give me a few more. Amen. So, um... The Bible tells us that this right here, it is an unruly evil. And it is an unruly evil. Testify, testify. Because with one breath, you can praise God. In the next breath, you can talk about me behind my back. God doesn't like that. Testify. Now, how can, how can you do that? So what I do, what God has delivered me from, talk about I it. shut up. I don't even approach, I don't even let that get into my spirit. When I see somebody talk, come in my face and talk to me, and then I hear that they're saying something or whatever, that doesn't bother me because I'm going straight to God. I'm not coming to you because I know where to go. God has delivered me from that. I no longer have to confront you but go in front of the king. Testify. Get it, get it, get it, get it. You will be delivered because what you do in secret is what God sees. I'm not trying to impress Pastor Stevens or Lady D. Who I'm trying to impress is God, and that's behind my closed doors. Testify. Board. Integrity is what you do when nobody's watching you. Give us when another... nobody's watching you, God has delivered me where I shut my mouth. Yes, I, sometimes I want to snap back. It's not worth it. There are so many other things going on in the world that's worth it. You are not worth your little snide remarks or whatever. God, let God deliver you from it. He can shut that tongue. All right, Sister Val, give us another testimony. We got that. So we got that shut up grace. Give us another testimony. He delivered you from, delivered from your mouth. He delivered you from unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. You had an unforgiving spirit. right into that unforgiving. Go before God. God will deliver you from that un un unforgiving spirit. It's, it's easy to hold on to offenses and what people do to you. You have to go before God to let them. God tell it, is tell our it. source. Yeah. Everything else is a resource. You have to go before God. God can give you a forgiving spirit, whether it be on your job, in your family, yes. with your husband, yes. with your spouse. Testify. God can give Testify. you a forgiving spirit if you allow him to. All right, give us another testimony. Testimony. Give me another testimony. What God has done. Humility. He, he humility. delivered you from pride, he delivered right? Me from pride and humility. Prideful. Pride comes before the fall. Testify. Humble yourself before Almighty God. Testify. Humble yourself before your sisters and brothers. Testify. And go to them and say, I'm sorry if I hurt you. Don't talk about them behind your back. Be humble. Give us Be another testimony. Oh, that's a, what's Be another humble. testimony? Giving. Giving. God says he loves a cheerful giver. I didn't used to give as much as I used to. But God gave me a heart to give. To give of Testify. myself. To give to the church. To give back to the church. To give Testify. to the house. All those years I wasn't giving to God. I feel like I'm overdue. So when you see me helping, when you see me praising God, when you see me doing my best, I'm trying to make up for lost time because I feel like I owe God. He doesn't owe me anything. So he delivered you from stinginess and selfishness. To testify. Give me another testimony. What he delivered you from? Testify. Helping people, helping people out. I got some other ones, but you know, you're on TV and all that. So, no. All of the stuff. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Give her a hand, everybody. Thank you. The testimony of a lunatic. The all the stuff you've been through in your past, truth be told, God was setting you up to give a powerful testimony. To look back and say, this is what God has brought me out of. And you can understand why you went through what you were going through. 
And God said, I'm setting you up. I'm bringing you out. So you can tell somebody else. You got a ministry on your life to tell some sister, you don't have to give up on life. Or brother, you don't have to give up on life. God was setting you up. Everybody stand. testimony of a lunatic. I want to invite someone to Christ today. I'm not saying join the church today. I'm not saying be a part of this organization. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you need to make Christ your Lord and your Savior first. Seeking first. The kingdom of God is righteousness. And all things should be added unto you. The sign on the on the screen shows repentance. It's it's turning away. It's a new desire. God can give you a U-turn. It's called repentance. You just make the turn. He'll guide you and direct you. You just come. Is there anyone here today who wants a new life? You want a new testimony? I want you to come. You've not been baptized in water in Jesus' name. I want you to come. I want you to repent right where you are. You don't have to say anything to anybody. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. And I want to come. One person coming. You, anyone else here? Some other individuals coming. Come on, ministers, help us with this. Anybody else? Please come. Make a decision today to give your life to Christ. She's going down in Jesus' name. Please come. He wants to change and alter your life. He wants to give you a new beginning. He wants to take you out of the tomb. What is your tomb? What, what is your mountain? What, what is your cutting? What is your dark place? Jesus wants to bring you out. You're not giving your life to Christ. You're not being baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus. You're not being filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to come. We have individuals already going down in Jesus' name. What about you? Will you come? Will you come? Will you come to give your life to Christ? I don't have a church. I'm going to ask you about a church. I'm going to ask you to give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ. And repent right where you are. Where are you? Who are you? Please, please come. I believe there's somebody else here. I believe somebody you like this close. Like, I really should go. I, you like this close. We'll come down and walk with you. Step out. Step out and come. Well, they want to be baptized. Talk with them. Please come. Please come. God wants to give you a testimony. Everything you've gone through, God was just setting you up. The setback was a setup for a comeback. He wants you to come back with a story of what God has done for you. Is there anybody else here today? Will you come? Please, please come. Come. Come now. God has something for you. He wants you to have a new testimony of his power, his love, his tranquility. Please come. I believe there's somebody else here. you like, I need to come. I need to come. Come on, brother. Come on, sister. God is tugging your heart. Tugging your heart. Let's focus on him today. You can become a champion today. Give me your life to Christ. Anybody else here today? You're not giving your life to Christ. I sense that somebody else here. Somebody else. There's one more person here. One more person is here. One more person is here. I want you to come. Where are you? There's the brother. He's coming now. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. God is calling you to come. God is calling you. He wants to change your life. He wants to give you another beginning. He wants to give you another beginning. I got a testimony. When I look back over my life, and I think 
things over I can truly say that I I got a testimony when I look back when I look back and I think things over I can truly say I was in a tomb. I was in a mountain. I cut myself. I had demons. I had devils. But now I got a testimony. Testimony. I got a testimony. You want the testimony? Come on. Testimony. I got a testimony. I got a testimony. Testimony. Got a testimony. bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. A testimony from a lunatic. A testimony. I do. I got a testimony. I got a testimony. I got a testimony. And I'm going to tell it, I'm going to tell it, I'm going to tell it. When I look back, when I look back, I look back, I think it over, I just think it over, I can truly say that I Testimony. You can't tell it, let me tell it. You can't tell it, let me tell it. You can't tell it, let me tell it. What the Lord done for me. Amen, amen. We're going to offer a benediction. And I want to offer a prayer, a pastoral prayer this morning. I pray for boldness. 
I come against fear. I pray for boldness that you would tell your story. Think back what the Lord, what he has done for you. And I pray for boldness that you will share it with someone. Those of you Holy Ghost feel boldness that God will give you boldness to tell your story. Father, I pray for boldness. I come against demons and devils by the way of the spirit of boldness. I pray for boldness in prayer, boldness in vision, boldness in worshiping God. I come against timid spirits, spirits of insecurity, and I speak boldness. I speak assurance. I speak preparation, God, for boldness. For our preparation is tied to our boldness. Make us so prepared so that we will be bold. Get us ready so we'll be bold. And in boldness, I pray for the anointing that flows through the boldness. Oh, God, save souls through boldness. Peter had boldness. Paul had boldness. James had boldness. God, I pray for apostolic boldness. That we may be witnesses in all part of the world, in Judea and Samaria and all parts of the earth, Lord. And we will be boldness. Boldness, oh God. Boldness for tongues. Boldness for interpretation of tongues. Boldness for healing. Boldness for deliverance. I pray for boldness. We bind the devil today with the spirit of boldness. Pray in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. If a person speaks in tongues and there's an interpreter, we're not going to stop the interpreter. Come on and tell us what the Lord has said. If you have a gift of interpretation of spirit and someone in the sanctuary begins to speak in tongues and you believe that God has given you clarity, come on. We're not going to hold you back. If it's God in your life, it's going it's to come to pass. It'll, it'll show itself. But we do believe in interpretation of tongues and, in, and speaking in tongues. We believe in healing and deliverance and the gifts of the Spirit. We believe in all of that. But what's required often is boldness. Boldness. What are people going to say? Bold. What if I'm wrong? Boldness. It's boldness. It's what the church needs to enjoy the anointing. Give your hands. Clap your hands one more time for God's goodness and mercy. call for our deacons to come and to give us leadership in our offertory. We call for our deacons to come and we ask that the ushers will take their positions as well. As well. Deacon Ola, if you can come and set our table up, we appreciate that very much. We're going to witness a baptism today. I know at least one person is going down in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are we ready? Okay, they're ready now. That should be up just briefly. I want to invite you to our Wednesday Bible study. Evangelist Cynthia Matthew Snow and Sister Waikita Lee will be teaching on evangelism, how to be a witness. As a young man, my best my best efforts of growth was sharing Christ. That's how I really grew as a young man. I began to share Christ. People thought I was Jehovah Witness, but I was a different kind of Jehovah Witness. I was a Jesus Jehovah Witness. And I knocked on doors and our team of the leadership of Elder Luke Stewart and we told people about Jesus. I think one of the greatest ways you can grow is sharing what you know about Jesus to others. It's the way that we grow. Amen. Let me offer a dismissal prayer, and uh, we pray for boldness, but this is a benediction. Father, we thank you today for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for this wonderful story we find in the text of a lunatic, a maniac who meets you. And we know that an encounter with you changes everything in our lives. I pray, God, you help us not to become professional churchgoers, but I pray for deliverance. I pray for strength. I pray for change in our lives. If 
any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So I pray, God, you help us to grow and to be witnesses, to be lights, to be examples, God, to impact this dying world. Now, God, we pray for revival. We pray for souls to be saved. We pray for souls to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We pray for ministerial gifts to move in the church. We pray, God, for the power of God to flow as never before, God. We pray, Lord, for leadership, Lord, and for guidance in all that we do, that you might receive the glory, God. Now, God, we give you thanks, and I pray you bless this congregation and all who are here. Give them safety in their travel, wherever they're going, their various destinations. Give them peace and safety to arrive there safely and to find all well when they arrive. So we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I also want to invite the men. It's coming Saturday. The men's ministry is meeting at 930. We had a wonderful time in the last session. Thank you for that, Sign Elder Griffin. Brothers, we had about maybe 30 brothers in our last meeting. We're shooting for 50 brothers. Our last meeting, the brother got saved. He came next day, following Sunday, got baptized, got filled with the Holy Ghost. He wants to join the usher. He said, I want to be a part of the usher meeting. So we're seeing people being delivered. And brothers come together, and we just have good discussion. It's not just religious discussion. We talk about how to be strong men. For all the men who are here, I'm inviting you out to a breakfast. It's free. There's no, there's no cost. In fact, we found an organization that's prepared to even support us with these, with these endeavors. So we got people outside the church that we want to be a blessing to your organization. So people are supporting us. They're with us. But you got to show up. So all of the men, all the men, I'm inviting you out this coming Saturday. Those of you who have sons and spouses who are not here, please remind them and encourage them to show up this coming Saturday at 930 for a wonderful breakfast and great discussion. We break up into small groups and we talk about issues that affect men. And I'm telling you, it's really, really good. So please, please join us this coming, this coming Saturday. We're waiting for the person who's, who's scared to be baptized. Um, I'm not sure what's going on, but let's move forward. We'll have our ushers to come to give us guidance. If you would like to stay and remain for the baptism, you're certainly welcome to return back to your seat uh, for our baptism. All right, we're now in the hands of our ushers.
What a wonderful sight. This is a championship game, right? This is the this is the game winner right now. Amen. We're so happy, amen, that she's given her life to Christ by the way of baptism. Father, we, we thank you for the soul who's come to give her life to you, God. And we pray, Lord, for change. We pray for growth. We pray, Lord God, for a new relationship with you. Now, God, give her all the things he so desires according to your riches and glory. Fill it with the Holy Ghost. Give her power and anointing. Give her, Lord, a peace and joy as never before. Now, Lord, we thank you for this young lady who's given her life to you by the way of the water. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.